Welcome. We're so glad we're, that you're here. Um, we're going to talk today about what's new and changing in ITIL 4. Um, some of you may be aware, um, some of you may not, uh, prior to hearing about this notice or about this webinar, that Axelos recently announced uh, that the release of ITIL 4 is coming at the beginning of 2019. So uh, we're going to talk about at a high level what that looks like. We'll talk about um, some release dates and logistics and and um, a good number of you guys probably have some ITIL version 3 certs. Uh, so we'll talk about what that means in terms of impact to you and um, talk about new content a little bit. Um, details are still coming out. So as we hear them um, prior to the uh, 2019 release, we will get those out to folks, but just wanted to give you a flavor as to what's new, what's coming, answer any initial questions that folks have. New details are coming out each month, um, so we'll know more next month. We'll know even more um, come January, but just wanted to give you guys an up-to-date um, status on kind of where ITIL 4 is at, how that's um, changing, how things are changing, what that's going to mean to those of us that are ITIL version 3 certified. So um, let's just jump right in. My name is Erica Flora. Uh, I am a principal at Beyond 20, and uh, I have been a longtime advocate of ITIL and IT service management. Um, a little bit about my background, I'm a microbiologist turned IT project manager turned organizational consultant trainer. Um, and uh, let's see, I got certified, gosh, back more than 10 years ago, back in my day, it was still called version two. And actually, um, the highest certification that you could get back when it was version two was called service manager. Uh, and back then, it was a two-week course that you had to take and a six-hour written essay. Um, so, so yeah, it was, it was pretty brutal. Um, but I cut my teeth a long time ago on this stuff and really enjoyed it. And um, when version three came out, I went to the highest in the certification path that you could go, um, and that's called ITIL Expert. Now, that is changing. We'll talk about that and what that means in, um, in ITIL 4. Um, but I've been a, a big advocate of, of lifelong learning and um, kind of obsessed in my career with helping organizations work more effectively, um, bring more value to their customers. And I think that why, while IT service management is really important, um, and I think it can bring a lot of value to IT organizations, it's not the silver bullet. It doesn't do all things for all people. And I think that there's some great learning that we can pull from things like Agile. Um, and DevOps and Lean. And so on the, on the screen here are some of the other certifications that I've achieved over the years. Um, and I really see myself as, as, and I think all of us to benefit by having a good understanding um, of a lot of these different things because at the end of the day, we need to look at them as tools to get the job done. Um, and each of these bring different benefits. And so we'll talk a little bit about them. If you guys have any questions kind of along the way, please do put them in the chat window. I'll be sure to, um, to answer them as we go. All right, so um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Beyond 20, if this is maybe your first webinar, um, the name Beyond 20, it's kind of interesting. It comes from a Gartner research study where they looked at when mission critical um, systems within organizations fail what that root cause was and they were actually able to trace back about 20% of these mission critical issues they traced them back to failure in hardware failure in software that actually 80% of the time they were able to trace it back to failure in people and failure in process you know failure in, in how organizations are doing their work. And so that's what we are passionate about is, is fixing that kind of stuff and tackling that kind of stuff. Um, going beyond the 20% of, of the hardware and the software stuff. Though we do a bit of that and you can see some of our, our technology partners down below. Um, but how we help in, in um, 
changing how organizations do work is we um, help by uh, starting with assessments. We can help build strategic roadmaps, design processes. Um, we're doing a lot of value stream mapping as well, and we'll talk a little bit later in this um, webinar as to what that means. Um, we do quite a bit of training as well, and across the very bottom, those are some of our um, government credentials and certifications and, and stuff like that. So for anybody that is PMP certified, you will get one PDU uh, for attending this webinar, and I'm happy to send you guys information um, so that you can claim that continuing credit. Can you guys still hear me? I'm getting that someone's not able to hear the audio. Okay, all is well. All right, again, if you're having any issues, well, you, you wouldn't be able to hear me if you're having audio issues, um, but I will let everyone know later on that if there were any issues, uh, we will send out a recording of today's session, and we'll be doing these sessions um, many times over the next few months as well. So. If if someone didn't catch a recording um, and wants to hear it live, um, they certainly can do that. There'll be lots of lots of opportunities for that. So uh, let's talk about what's changing at a high level. So um, ITIL 4, while it is a major revision, it's just an evolution um, beyond idle version 3. Uh, it's not meant to be a replacement. It's not meant to say, well, nothing that you learned in, in idle version 3 is important. This is a totally new whiz-bang thing, um, and you're going to have to you're going to have to learn everything from scratch. Everything from idle version 3 is still relevant. Um, and in fact, the stuff that you learn in one of our foundations classes, highly practical. You know, we do deep dives into all of the different processes. That stuff is staying um, in version four. Um, so you will still see incident and problem and change and stuff like that. Um, I like to liken it so um, back when things were transitioning from version two to version three, like what was that, 10 years ago or so, um, the stuff in version two showed up in version three. Uh, I like to use the analogy, and I'm probably dating myself a lot by saying this, but if you guys remember the commercial of the Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop, where they're like, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? And then the owl was like, a one, a two, a three, um, <laughs> which was the weirdest <laughs> little commercial, but I think it's stuck in everyone's head from from that generation. Uh, if you think about that nougaty brown center, back when we were going from version two to version three, and the same is true going from version three to idle four, um, version three is that nougaty center. There's just a lot of candy that's being added to the outside. Um, so there's more good stuff being added to it. It's a modernization of the idle books and, and I think a better reflection of how organizations are actually um, you know, starting to, to work and have been working in some cases for quite some time. Um, idle version three will be sunsetted, but it won't be until 2020. So all of my version three folks, don't freak out. What you're still learning is relevant, it's valuable. A lot of that stuff will carry over to version four. Um, uh, and version three is not going away immediately. So let's talk about version four and some of the release dates and, and stuff like that. So um, the idle four foundation, both class, exam, materials, um, uh, you know, resources are all coming out in Q1 of 2019. Advanced information, and we'll talk about what the different advanced certifications look like, um, as well as those materials are coming out in the last half of 2019. So it's going to be rolled out over the course of this coming year. Okay, so this is what folks are going to be probably most interested in if you've got an IDLE version 3 um, certification of some kind. Uh, the IDLE 4 certification path is much, much simpler. It's a bit more pared down, and I like it in, in the sense that in version 3, there's two paths. There's the life cycle path, there's the capability 
path, but it wasn't really clear for folks as to who should be taking what class. Um, there was a lot of overlap. Um, and, and I like what they've done here. They've really kind of simplified it. So just like in version three, there is an ITIL foundation for ITIL four. Um, and we'll talk about what that is and how to bridge to it uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so everyone starts at foundations. Once you've taken foundations, then you can take one or you can take several of the more advanced classes. So this is foundations. Um, follow me to the left, and I've got it circled here in orange. Um, there's a path that's really meant to be more for practitioners, um, folks that are that are doing the work. And the top of that is what's called ITIL Managing Professional. So in order to achieve Managing Professional, you have to take four classes. Three of them are specialist classes, so there's great deliver and support. There's drive stakeholder value, and there's high velocity IT. There's also an idle strategist class called direct plan and improve. And once you achieve, um, or once you take rather, each of these four classes, there will be an exam with each of these four classes. Once you pass those four exams, then you become managing professional. Now, for more of my leaders um, that need a more strategic view, um, there is a specific path for that kind of individual as well. So folks in leadership, um, there is uh, the two classes are idle strategist. And if you look to the left of that, the other idle strategist class that you see, that's the exact same class. So the same class um, can uh, help you earn credits to get to either side um, of the of the chain. Use my words, the, the other path. Uh, so it's idle strategist, that same class, as well as a class called Idle Leader around digital and IT strategy. So once you take those two classes, pass that exam, then you automatically become strategic leader. So the ones in the blue, the managing professional and strategic leader, those you earn after achieving um, the credits from each of the classes below it, there's not a class or associated exam with that. So, you know, in version three right now, there's, oh my gosh, there's like 10 different intermediate classes that you can take. This is really simplified and pared down. There's a total of five classes at that um, intermediate or advanced level. Now, here's the uh, question that we get a lot. There will not actually be a bridge to idle foundation four. So if you are at the idle version three foundation level, sometime between now and 2020, you'll want to take idle foundation for idle four. For those of you, however, that have gone beyond idle three foundation, there is a bridge class and that's this brown box over here to the left. Um, you have to have 17 what's called credits um, by taking um, idle foundations as well as intermediate classes in version three to be able to qualify to take the bridge class. Um, we're still learning, or I don't know yet, as to how many days of class uh, class time that's going to be, as well as what the exam is going to look like. But there will be a class and an exam that bridges you from version three to idle version four, and you'll achieve once you pass that managing professional transition, you will earn ITIL managing professional or ITIL MP, which is the equivalent of idle version three expert. So experts going away, it's going to be replaced by this managing professional designation. Um, and 17 credits, so just so you have an idea of what 17 credits looks like, um, in the current version, in ITIL version 3, you get two credits for taking ITIL foundation and passing the exam. Uh, and then depending on the class, you either get three or four credits for each intermediate class. If you're taking the life cycle classes, there are five of them. So there's one for strategy, or excuse me, yeah, one for strategy, one for design one for transition, one for operation, one for CSI. Each of those classes, once you pass the exam, you earn three credits. So if you had taken, let's say, foundations and a couple of the uh, the life cycle classes, if you round out and take all five of those classes, that will give you 17 credits, and you'll be able to take the managing professional transition. The further good news is you can take intermediate classes all the way until 2020. So we're still offering idle version three, 
um, intermediate classes. So if you've taken, I would say, at least one intermediate class, it's worth it to go through and take the, the other remain, remaining classes that you need in order to get 17 credits because then you can just do a high level bridge across to the highest level in version four. Um, and you can skip a lot of these. Um, if you want to take all the classes in Idle 4 as they come out, they'll start coming out uh, in the last half of 2019. You can certainly do that as well. Um, the other way that you can get credits, so I talked about lifecycle classes. There are also capability classes. Each of those give you four credits, um, and there are four of them. So if you were to take four of the capability classes along with the Idle Foundations, you would also earn the 17 credits, and you could take the the transition or the bridge to idle managing professional. Uh, idle master. Um, this is not entirely clear as to whether or not it's going to be the exact same process as the current idle version three master designation. It will be a combination of theory as well as um, practice working in the industry, but details have not come out on that yet. So that is also forthcoming. Any questions on this stuff so far before I charge ahead? This is usually where a lot of the, the questions come. Ah, so the question is, is there any chance that a bridge class will be offered in the future if the core of version three is the same? So enough of it has changed that there will not be a bridged class to idle for foundation. Um, it, you will have to take Idle 4 um, in order to retain the uh, uh, current certification. Um, and we'll talk about what has been added. Um, there's a lot to it. It's not just focused on processes. In fact, um, the idea of processes is being expanded as well. So um, yeah, there's enough stuff there that um, there won't be a bridge. It will be new foundations going forward. Ah, okay, so a couple people are asking, I'm idle version three expert level. Um, I'm right there with you. Uh, that is going away. That designation, um, the replacement for that is going to be this idle managing professional or MP. If you are idle expert certified, you have all the credits that you need. You have well more than 17 credits. You, like the rest of us, myself included, uh, will take the managing professional transition to get to idle MP. Oh, good question. I did an idle service master to, to idle expert class. How do I know how many points I have? Um, that is a good question. I don't know that off the top of my head. I was also... Um, at that level back in version two. If you did a bridge, you should be idle expert version three. Um, but if not, uh, let's talk about that. Feel free to shoot me an email and I'll send you guys here in the chat window um, my email address. If you have specific questions around like, hey, I have, um, I have this particular designation or I have two intermediate classes and one is life cycle and one is capability. We can talk about, okay, how many more points would you need um, to, able, to be able to qualify for that transition? Ooh, a lot of good questions. So let's hang out on this slide here for a second as I read through some of these. Um, when will the books and publications for Idle 4 be available? So at the foundations level, so this is going to be a little bit different. Um, because we're an accredited training organization, they have released a draft um, draft documentation at the foundations level um, to us for feedback and, and just so we internally can get ourselves trained up and, and knowledgeable so that we can begin teaching foundations in Q1 of 2019. Um, as far as the books and publications, um, in Q1, they should also, at least at the foundation level, should be available to the public. So there's going to be foundational level book, which 
didn't exist before in version 3. Um, if you guys had a, or ha currently have a copy of the IDLE version 3 books, there are five books. There's one for strategy, one for design, one for transition, one for operation, one for CSI. Those are the core books. There's certainly lots of other books and publications besides those five, but those were the core that really um, formed the basis of IDLE Foundations training and the intermediate training. So the idea is that an actual foundation level book will be available in Q1, and then some of the more advanced publications uh, will be available in the last half of 2019. So it, it's a little bit different of a release than, than those of you that have been around this for a while. Um, going version 2 to version 3, everything was released together. Um, here they're doing more of a, a staged or phased rollout of the material. Ah, so the question is, would you recommend that we move from foundation to the idle strategist course first? Um, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve, uh, and I would say that that's true with version 3 as well. It depends on your role, what you're hoping to learn, and what you're hoping to get out of it. Now, um, we don't yet know a lot of the details as to um, the syllabus of these classes. As soon as we get that information, we'll send that out to folks so you can start looking to see, okay, does this syllabus help me with what I'm trying to do in my role? Um, you know, very broad brushstrokes. If you're in a leadership role, then probably the um, oh shoot, I have now messed up my slides. Please hold. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Yeah, so um, strategic leader. If you are in a leadership role, idle strategist might be a really great one to start with, and then go to idle leader or vice versa. Um, but yeah, more details to come. I don't know the the full answer to that as of yet. Um, and then also uh, the question that I had earlier about is there a bridge class? So when the version went from two to three, there was a one day bridge class to go from two to three because there was so much added in three. Um, the Idle Foundation class in Idle 4, um, from what I can tell so far, it's looking like it's only going to be a two-day instead of a three-day class. So, um, you know, it's not as, as um, compact as a one-day bridge, um, but you won't have to take another whole three days um, like you currently have to do with Idle version 3. Ooh, good question. Is there a map that aligns the IDLE V3 modules and processes to IDLE 4 terminology and other methods like COBIT, IDLE, or IT4, IT? Uh, so we are actually, um, that's a great question. So our instructors have our hands on, on the draft material, and we're starting to do that. Um, we're taking the processes and seeing where and how they map in version 4, because it is a little bit different. Um, terminology, I would say the majority of terminology is staying the same, but um, but with this revision, there's certainly going to be some terminology that is changing. So uh, we will be putting that out ourselves. I'm sure other training organizations will as well. But um, we are hard at work at that. Um, we are seeing some things changing. Can't give super specifics on all that because it is just a draft um, document that we're seeing now. And who knows, it could, <laughs> it could change between now and then. So I don't want to lie to you guys. Um, but yes, we will be creating that map. And I'll mention this, or there's actually a slide around this later on in the in the webinar, but if you go to our blog, it's just blog.beyond20.com. There's a few Idle 4 articles out there. There's one specific to, okay, what's the path that I take with my existing uh, version 3 certifications? What does that look like if I'm translating that to version 4? Um, so there's some really good articles there, maybe just a handful right now, but each week we're adding more and more articles as we learn more about version 4. Um, and there's another question. 
around when will, I'm assuming certain courses be offered. Um, if it's foundations, Q1. We are planning on uh, the first couple of months of the of 2019 um, launching our Idle 4 course, foundations course, um, but it's not going to be until like June, July, uh, that time frame where any of those advanced classes are going to be available. So ITIL specialist, ITIL strategist, ITIL leader, um, yeah, you're looking at the back half of 2019. So another really good question, is there any value in doing the inter intermediate certs between now and the advanced classes being launched at the end of next year? So again, it really depends on your goal. Um, if you've taken intermediate classes, I would say don't let those, um, I'm not going to say go to waste because there's really good learning that happens in the intermediate classes. But if you've got some under your belt, um, I would, if it was me, I'll tell you me, my personal opinion, and and really you guys make a decision for yourselves. But if it was me and I had taken, let's say, a couple of intermediate classes, I would probably take a couple more in the next two years so then I could just bridge across to managing professional. Because a lot of the stuff that you will see in some of these intermediate classes, like specialist, strategist, leader, will be covered as part of that that bridge or that transition to managing professional and you, it's just a, a quicker path it's a less expensive path to go idle version three and then across to managing professional so what about the idle practitioner exam that's a really good question too man you guys are are asking some great stuff today so um Idle practitioner, for those of you that um, are not aware of what this is, about a year ago, um, the folks that that um, manage the intellectual property for ITIL came out with a book called Idle Practitioner. It was a standalone book, um, probably about 100 pages or so, um, around how do you take this stuff and actually put it into practice. And it wove a lot of Agile and Scrum kinds of concepts in with IT service management concepts. It's a really interesting book, and we're actually going to talk about it a little bit today. Um, but that was like the first step towards Idle 4. And you'll see a lot of the stuff in Practitioner um, is showing up in Idle 4. Um, there's guiding principles and things like that that are really good um, uh, place to look if you're interested in, in some of the information that's coming out in Idle 4. And that's been out for the last year. Now, if you took the Idle Practitioner class, took the exam, that gives you three credits. So think of that as, as three credits on top of two credits for foundation. So you are at five credits. If you're interested in taking the bridge class, you would need to get just a few more credits. Um, but that is that's a that definitely counts towards your credits. Oops, and it looks like my slides have gone away. So thank you so much for letting me know that. Um, so we're still on the same slide. I haven't covered anything that <laughs> I'm just talking to the same slide. I haven't covered anything new yet. Ooh, good question. How is this going to affect IT service management software that's based on, on uh, the ITIL books? So I know that, so we're a partner with ShareWell. I know that we've been talking extensively with them about, um, about ITIL 4 and what's coming. Um, I know a lot of the, um, the software providers are looking at, um, being on the forefront of this change, I don't see a big um, uh, I don't see a big gap between what's being provided and what's um, coming out in Idle Four. And when I talk about some of the concepts, you guys will see it, it's really some of the bigger changes are things like um, or the bigger additions are tie-ins with Agile and Scrum and DevOps and Lean. And a lot of software providers are already doing that and have been integrating that. Um, 
into their software. So, um, yeah, I don't think that that's going to be um, some, you know, an area of concern at all. Ooh, another good question. Um, product management. Uh, uh, I think the question is asking, uh, is there going to be mapping to product management? There will be information on product management. Um, don't have a whole lot of details on that yet, but, um, but yes, there will be a mapping uh, and th that will be taken into consideration. Yeah. Uh, yes, so uh, I see another question asking about Idle 4 and how it encompasses DevOps, Agile, Lean, Automation, Cloud, etc. cetera. Uh, yes, that is one of my slides. I promise I will get to it. Ah, so question, uh, Beyond 20 still has Idle Practitioner. I think we also have some intermediate co courses still on the calendar for 2019. Um, those are still going to be on the calendar. We will still be teaching intermediate classes. There's lots of interest on the intermediate classes, especially for folks that want to get to the 17 credits. So yes, um, the so I can at least speak for us that we are looking at exactly when we will be doing our last version three class, um, probably going to be the end of this year, uh, replaced by Idle 4 Foundation in January. Um, but the intermediate classes for version three will still be on the calendar for 2019, which makes it super confusing. But um, we'll you know, have to just let people know kind of as the questions um, come. Oh, good question. When will the bridge course be available? I don't know yet. If I were to make a guess, an educated guess, I'd probably say middle of next year. Uh, are the classes on the web or do we have to attend a physical classroom? So with, with intermediate classes, you do need to um, attend a classroom. However, um, we do our intermediate classes um, virtually so you can attend virtually um, we teach them in uh, in Washington DC on the East Coast for so for my West Coasters it means an early day unfortunately but um, all of our intermediate classes are available virtually so I mean the good news is you get your day done a lot earlier if you're on the West Coast Cool. So I see someone saying that they just picked up their Scrum Master certification. That is a really good certification um, and a very good complement to the stuff that's coming out in Idle 4. Okay, and I see another question. I am one exam away from Idle V3 expert. I just have to take MALC or Managing Across the Lifecycle exam. What are my options? Uh, take the MALC exam, get IDLE expert certified, um, and take the bridge class. Yeah, it's still a really good cert to have. Um, you know, come January 1st of 2019, people aren't going to go, oh, expert, that's old news. That's, uh, that's not important. Um, it still carries weight in the industry. I highly recommend it. Uh, there will, so another question. Oh, man. Might be okay. Only two more questions, so bear with me. Uh, are there going to be PDUs offered for taking the bridge? So there is a class and a bridge test, so you will get um, continuing credits. For those of you that don't know what PDUs are, it stands for Professional Development Unit. Um, for anybody that is PMP certified, has the Project Management Professional certification, you have to um, get continuing credits to maintain the certification. So for those of you that aren't PMP certified, you don't have to care about those kinds of things. Um, for those of us that are, we, we do have to chase after PDUs every year. Um, but yes, there will be PDUs. I don't know how many at this point. All right, two more questions. I'm currently studying for IDLE version 3 foundation. Should I continue with the test early next year or wait until IDLE 4 since there's no upgrade of the test from version 3 to version 4 foundation? Um, again, I can, you know, you'll have to answer this for yourself. Uh, if it was me personally in that situation, I would take the test. 
Again, still good certification to have to be foundation certified. Um, we're doing something kind of cool in Q4 for anybody that wants to take version three. Um, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. So for the ITIL 4 foundations class, what is the passing score? Is it the same? I wish I knew the answer to that. I do not know the answer to that yet. Um, I will know that later this year and I'll be sure to let you guys know. Uh, there will be uh, an exam. There will be a passing score. I'm going to assume it's going to be multiple choice and probably pretty similar to, uh, to what foundations um, is now. Ah, okay. So, thanks, Patrick. When you were telling me that you got uh, your Scrum certification, I was like, good for you. I didn't realize that you were asking me about Scrum's educational units. Um, I believe that this would qualify because um, Agile and Scrum is uh, part of the content of version four. So, your Idle 4 foundation or any of the advanced classes would qualify you for um, for Scrum Alliance's uh, Scrum Educational Unit credits. Yeah. Cool, all right. That's all my questions for now. Uh, let's go a couple slides forward and, um, and go through all this animation again. Fantastic. <laughs> Man, the animation's a lot cool, uh, less cool the second time around. All right, so what's new? So some of it's, um, and I say new-ish because some of this stuff has been around for a while. It's just it hasn't been part of the the core material. Um, starting with ITIL's guiding principles. A lot of people don't know that ITIL has a bunch of guiding principles. This stuff came out um, with a practitioner book, and it was actually my favorite part of the ITIL practitioner book because it gives you a practical approach and it really speaks to mindset as you start implementing this stuff and yet most of the community of folks that have idle certification have no idea that these exist so we'll touch on these a little bit here in the next slide but um but i think that goes a long way to going beyond just the here are all the tools and techniques that you can use um, into the realm more of here's how you actually implement this stuff successfully you know, because back in my day, um, and I think that this is still true, you can get to Idle Expert and have a head full of knowledge around the theory, but not a head full of knowledge around how to implement this stuff and how, how it actually works in the real world. So, um, so I'm a big fan of these guiding principles. I think they're actually pretty cool. Um, there's more of a focus on delivering customer value. So you'll see um, more talk around uh, not so much processes because yeah processes help us you know work more efficiently but at the end of the day it's about delivering customer value so a ton of new and interesting content around um, that focus and like I had said previously it goes beyond processes and it, and there's a lot more content around what are the things that we have to consider beyond processes because processes can help uh, <laughs> can help us create silos rather than break them down. Um, and the, the complaint that a lot of people had about version three is that um, there was a very disjointed focus. You know, if you implemented a process, there wouldn't necessarily be a, a wider perspective. It was more of a step-by-step -step process um, rather than a bigger picture view. And Idle 4 really, um, uh, has some stuff around how do we have more of a high level systems thinking view, pulls a lot of ideas from uh, lean uh, around like uh, value streams, um, a lot of stuff from agile, you'll see a lot of that in the guiding principles. Um, a lot of stuff is pulled from the DevOps, uh, the DevOps movement and how it integrates um, here with IT service management. So real quick, these are the guiding principles that they talk about in, um, in the practitioner book. And there's a few that I think, well, I mean, they're all interesting. I think some kind of speak to me a little bit more than others. Uh, starting with this focus on value, um, I, there's a lot more 
content um, recently in the iTool books around having this outward focus on the customer and truly being customer centric. Um, in the in agile world, um, there's a lot of talk around focusing on on delighting our customers, exciting our customers, um, you know, having uh, and bringing value to our customers quickly and with high quality. Um, so that one I think is is really compelling. Um, I also really like start where you are, you know, build on what's working, using what we have, um, but also just getting moving. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to implement all of this stuff. In version three, I used to hear folks say, you know, and rightfully so, people would get overwhelmed by all the processes, you know, depending on on how you looked at, at what was a major versus a minor process, you're looking at about 26 processes. And folks would get lost and be like, where do we even start? Um, and so I think that this guiding principle helps give some more guidance around that, that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and in fact, what I always tell customers is start with, where are we having pain? You know, where are our biggest challenges? Let's then you know, starting with either what our challenge is or what our goal is, then let's look in the iTool books and see if there's anything that can help us address that issue or, or tackle that goal. Um, but it doesn't have to be this huge endeavor. You don't have to try to implement everything and have a multi-year improvement um, plan. In fact, people uh, lose interest and enthusiasm when you do things like that. So it's, it's, more about start where you are, do something small. And if you look at the middle of the slide, that progress iteratively, that comes from uh, the agile move, or movement or agile mindset of just saying, let's take something very small. Let's have an empirical or a scientific approach to it. Um, let's get some data and make small improvements. Those small improvements add up over time and help us get better. Um, but we wanna be thinking more of how do we break our work up into very small and much more manageable, manageable chunks so we can focus on them. Um, if you look at the bottom in the middle, there's a guiding principle around collaboration, you know, sharing knowledge in real time so that we can make decisions very quickly as an organization. Um, you, that we break down silos, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot more of our customers these days where they actually have, um, instead of teams organized around processes, they have cross-functional teams that collaborate, um, that rapidly improve. Um, it worries me when I see organizations that say, well, we've had a change management process that has been our exact same process for the last 10 years. Um, that is not doing your organization any benefit at all. And so there's a lot more in Idle 4 around how do we um, improve? How do we have a, this mindset of continual improvement within our organization? And then I like the bottom right one, keeping it simple. Um, you know, doing the minimum work to get, or the minimum steps to get work delivered. Um, you know, stopping doing things that don't add value, removing non-value added work or waste. Um, yeah, I think these are, are pretty cool. I don't know what you guys think, but I like them quite a bit. All right, so let's talk about next steps. I mentioned this before. If you go to our blog, it's just blog.beyond20.com. There's some really good articles, not only about Idle 4, but about some of these other concepts that I mentioned uh, you know, what a lot of people see as buzzwords like Agile and Scrum and DevOps and Lean, etc. cetera. Uh, if you haven't taken an Idle Foundations course, we do have two more in 2018. Uh, we've got one uh, in person in Fairfax at the end of November. We've also got one in the middle of December, just in time for Christmas to yourself uh, in DC. And um, if you do take an Idle Foundation version three, uh, class with us in the last quarter of 2018, you get 50% off of Idle 4 training when it becomes available in the new year. So um, at 50% off, I think you're looking at a little bit less than 500 bucks for uh, for the Idle 4 training. So um, you can get both all in one, all in one go. And then you know the version three stuff and you know the version four stuff. Oh, good question, Peter. So if you guys have questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat window. We still have a few minutes left, so I can tackle a few more things. Um, but I think this is such a great statement. I have seen IT staff weaponize process 
to hold business demand at bay. Man, I've seen this too. Um, so I'll take change management, for example. Change management is one where it can really help an organization do great things if done well. And it can really give people a bad taste in their mouth for IT service management if done poorly. You know, if done well, we prevent our organization from introducing risk that can take critical services down um, that can impact business in a really ugly way. So there's real value behind it. However, I think what happens is people confuse process with approval. And so change management is one that can get a really bad rap if you're asking people to fill out a crap ton of information then you're asking them to wait forever, and then mother may I get my changes approved, and then what ends up happening is either it slows the organization down, or people just go around the process and they say to heck with it, it's not even worth it, and then you do away with the value of the whole process altogether. So I think what has happened is people have seen, pro they've abused processes to, slow organizations down and to um, say, well, I, I'm the holder of the keys and, it, and you can't do anything if you don't get through me. And that is an old way of thinking. We need to have a new way of thinking. Like, so for example, I'll, I'll stick with the change management example. Um, I'm seeing a lot of organizations that are, are understanding that, that get it, that say, okay, we need to work quickly because in our competitive landscape now, speed is king. Um, you know, you don't want to to not consider quality, but um, but the fast organizations eat the slow these days, and so they're doing um, they're taking change management and integrating it with with Scrum concepts, and they're saying, well, let's do a daily Scrum and talk about change, so we can allow change to happen every day. Um, let's look at ways we can automate this stuff so that we're introducing less risk. Um, and process can be a great thing. It just needs to be lightweight. And for too long, we've made process really, really heavyweight, very bureaucratic, and no wonder people are pissed. So, um, yeah, I think there's a really good path forward. Um, we just have to be uh, participants in what's going on and not fighting against it. Uh, so the question is, if a subscriber to TSO Online, that's the folks that actually publish the, the books, has version 3, will we have access to both version 3 and 4? I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I would reach out to TSO and ask them, but I believe they are treating version three books and version four books and the materials associated with each as different products. I like this. Uh, so in the change management example, Peter made the comment, yeah, and at the end of change management, you're told you're, that you filled out the wrong form, go back to the beginning. Yeah, that's not a good way of working. We've got to work more hand in hand with the other groups in our um, within IT as well as with our customers to to allow agility to happen, but also protect protect ourselves and not introduce um, risk. Oh, I love it! Minimally minimally viable bureaucracy. Yeah, in fact, in fact, at um, Scrum at scale, they talk about minimal viable leadership. I think that's what it's called, or minimal viable uh, management that you just need enough to get the job done. Um, and then one other, I've got two more questions and then uh, I think we're gonna be out of time. So uh, one question around uh, implementing ITIL in the federal government is a real challenge. Um, that is true, however, federal government, um, you know, this came out of the British government. So whenever I hear folks say like, this doesn't work in government, it's like, what are you talking about? This came from government. Uh, I'm seeing that change. I've seen a shift in that. And in fact, um, uh, we bid on government contracts from time to time and we see a lot of um, requirements uh, in like RFP requests that say, show us how you're compliant with IT service management or with ITIL um, because the federal government wants to know that 
IT organizations are following good practice. Um, I, I'm starting to see a big shift too and a big groundswell in federal government around Agile. Um, the scaling framework, scaled Agile framework, I'm seeing a big groundswell in some of the agencies there too. Um, government is a different is different than commercial because there isn't the same um, the same goal. You know, with with companies, it's about are we remaining competitive? Are we remaining profitable? Like that kind of stuff drives a company. Whereas government, they still want to get stuff done. They want to be able to fulfill the mission of the organization. So implementing a lot of this best practice, or, or what I like to say, better practice, better than what we're doing. Um, the you know some agencies are better than this than others, but I'm starting to see um, that that mentality is shifting, for sure. You just got to speak to what um, different groups really care about. You know, for government, it's can we fulfill the mission? Can we do it well? Can we do it quickly? Okay, and then I got <laughs> got another question around uh, Agile encompasses DevOps, Agile, Lean, Automation, Cloud, etc. Any insights on that? Um, I can't go into the specifics yet. Just please know that it is coming as soon as um, we get the blessing to go forward and give you guys all the details. Um, I will be more than happy to do that. Um, feel free to shoot me an email directly. And I will uh, I will send you information as soon as I have it. Um, we'll also be advertising more webinars to share this information, and there will be a lot more coming on our blog. So um, it is coming. I just don't have a lot more to tell you guys today around specifics. I apologize, um, but please stay tuned. Okay, and if you guys have questions, like I said before, reach out to me. Send me an email. Uh, you can also follow myself or Beyond20 on Twitter uh, as well as LinkedIn. We've got a ton of YouTube videos. This will also be one of the ones that um, we probably post on YouTube in the next week or so. Um, but yes, please, uh, please reach out. We love to hear um, any additional questions you guys have, comments, things like that. Uh, I realize as I'm talking, there's a few more questions that came out. Uh, let me see if there's anything I can answer very quickly. Uh, yes, so the bridge class, I call it a bridge class. I think it's called the transition class from V3 to, to the V4 MP. Uh, there will be a class and there will be an exam. So you have to pass an exam, details of which I don't know just yet. Uh, PMIs, continuing credits, information. So I can tell you guys, if you just go into PMI and you search Beyond 20 or you search our uh, registered educational provider number, REP number, it is 2842. Um, and you should be able to just go put the title of this, of this webinar and uh, submit it for one PDU. Um, we will also be sending out an email to everyone uh, with a link to the recording as well as PDU information. So um, if you want to go ahead and do it yourself, you certainly can. If you want to wait for the email to come out uh, later today, you can do that as well. And I think that's all the questions. Again, if you guys have questions, um, please let me know. Uh, one person did have another question. I totally lied to you guys about um, doing classes in Canada. Uh, we have books. We will travel. Um, if you have about six or more folks in your organization that want a particular class, whether it be version 3, version 4, or any of the other classes we teach around all of these other buzzwords I've been uh, talking about today, but and not giving you guys more detail, um, we can come and, and do on-site training. We do quite a bit of that as well. All right, awesome. Uh, great. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us.